Hi everyone, it's Alan here from Fishing Mad. Well, it sure has been a crazy month. Combination of COVID lockdowns once again, and pretty horrendous weather has made fishing next to impossible. Finally, I'm out this morning. We're greeted with some beautiful weather. It is absolutely freezing, but look behind me, you've got crystal calm conditions. Sticking within my five kilometers and two hours of exercise, we're gonna hit the water and see if we can catch a couple of fish in a short time of window keep everyone entertained whilst we're all in lockdown. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let's get fishing. Have a look at these conditions, eh? You know what, we've only got two hours and the effort that it takes to get down here, drag the kayak and set up. But you know what, I ain't gonna overlook it for conditions this nice. Now, driving here, the temperature was only four degrees. So that water is going to be freezing, but I'm super excited. I haven't been out for a while. So um, I'm just chomping at the bit to get out there, catch a fish. Whew. My feet are frozen. It is peak of high tide right now, which is usually a pretty good time for fishing. Um, now, I have hit the water, it's about eight o'clock. So once we get to about 9.30 today, I will start coming in and wrapping it up just to comply with those rules that obviously I'm not a big fan of, but they are what they are. And look, certainly around this area, when that water temperature is bitterly cold, you find a lot of the fish species just go off the bite. You know, your pinkies and your flathead and all this stuff that you're used to catching in big numbers. They go pretty quiet at this time of year, so it's a very challenging time to be out there fishing. You know, this is where you want to be on the piers targeting garfish and looking for schools of salmon and stuff. But you know what? On a kayak, we're just going to make the best of it. So what I am going to do is, I've got a couple of rods with me today, so I'm just going to have a bait. Okay. I don't get tangled up. So I've got just a little Paternoster rig here, two hooks. What I use is the, basically the smallest sinker that I've got. And basically what's gonna happen is as I drift along, that's just gonna drag and drift on the bottom there. So we're just gonna load this up with a couple of small chunks of pilchard. Got some bait here. All right, so you can see it's funny already. Already in the five minutes that we've been on the water, you can see it's just changed a bit already, those conditions. This was dead, dead calm. Like there wasn't a ripple in the water at all five minutes ago. And don't get me wrong, these conditions are perfectly fine, but amazing how quickly it changes. And conditions are supposed to remain like this for the next, well, two hours anyway. So, and that's all we need today. So, and as I said, I haven't done any fishing now, probably for about four weeks. So, don't have high, high hopes. I'm just wanting to catch something. So, let's just thread that through. Okay, thread another little chunk there through. Just enough so that hook is exposed. The problem with pilchers is they do get quite soft and mushy. So, there you go, like that, that's perfectly fine. And, I think this thing's gonna get in the way. I thought that was a good idea, but second guessing that now. So what you wanna do when you cast these out is you wanna work out which way, not you're drifting, but which way the line's drifting. It actually looks like it's going this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that one in that rod holder there. Okay, and then what we are gonna do is we are gonna flick some soft plastics. Now, if we're gonna catch anything today, my bet is it's gonna be flathead. So flathead or bait, oh, is that a, that would have been nice if it was a hit already. I'm going to be mainly flicking this rod here. So this is my Zodius and Vanford combo. Perfect for, you know, targeting flatties and pinkies and that sort of stuff. And these turtleback worms. So the camo ones in four inch. Um, they're almost as good as it gets for targeting flatties in inshore waters like this where it's nice and shallow. Now this area isn't notorious for big flathead, but I'll tell you, I've caught plenty of them. 
between that 50 and 60 centimeter size around here and i tell you what that's uh i reckon that's pretty good so all you want to do is just thread that on nice and straight so i've just got a one eighth of an ounce jig head there now you find with these they do break up pretty easily so if you do get a few bites okay so that's looking good there if you get a few bites you're going to need to replace them but you know what i think you would just be happy to get a few bites oh we're getting a bite here come on come on gotcha gotcha there we go what do we got all right this feels quite nice i gotta reach my net here what do we got this is a nice oh it's a beautiful flooded yes look at that all right that's a ripper flooded fantastic well it's been pretty tough out here we've been on the water for about half an hour not much has happened and then i just flicked across to one of the turtleback worms a four inch in camo which is one of my favorite flathead plastics and what do you know got a bite on this on some uh new gear that i'm playing around with and that's a beautiful little flatty there so that's spot on about 32 centimeters so that is a legal size flatty here probably gonna let this guy go but you know what after being off the water for close to a month which is very very unusual for me it's just awesome to catch something and uh you know hear that drag clicking over and that's not a big fish but you know what i'm still really happy with that so I've um, got about another half an hour before we need to call it quits with these two hour limits. So let's see if we can catch another fish in that time frame. Okay, so what I'm flicking at the moment, so that is just one of those Berkeley turtleback worms. That's a four inch in camo color. I've got that on a one eighth of a jig head. Okay, just got, I think that's 12 pound leader and 12 pound line. Just using one of my normal light combos there, guys. Now, one little tip that I'll give you is when the water temperature is really low and if we have a look at the moment the water temperature if i just click this back over the water temperature is sitting on 11.8 degrees so that's really cold right and that's expected in winter so what i find is the bites that you do get during winter especially for this sort of shallow inshore fishing the bites are really timid they're not those real aggressive big strikes um you know un unless you come across a school of salmon or something so what I do is I work my soft plastic really, really slowly, okay? I will let it sit on the bottom for 20, 30 seconds at a time, give it a little lift, wind up the slack, and then just let it sit there. And also what you'll find is, which is a bit like that flat head bite before, you feel the nibble, you feel the nibble, you feel the nibble, and then it'll take it, right? So um, you don't wanna go too quick. I think this time of year, because that water temperature is really cool, um, you know the fish just aren't their normal aggressive selves when they eat things so we're just going to go nice and slow give it a chance to stay in that strike zone for them to see it suss it out and then hopefully bite it and get onto a fish it just feels so nice to be back out on the water nice to dust off the old kayak i think the kayak hasn't been used for about three months and i haven't been on the water for at least a month which is very very unusual obviously with all the stuff that i do on the channel and website and other bits and pieces so ah it's freezing but you know what it's really uh it's really nice just to be back out here now i don't want to venture out too deep today there's a few marks there let's see if they're anything hey that's definitely a bit archy so let's uh let's just flick here for a little bit oh yeah come on bit of color all those conditions now are just starting to flatten out and here is our second catch of the day which is a beautiful little pinky 
It's a funny thing, these new social distancing rules, because I tell you what, if we have a bit of a 360 pan around, you can see, I know it's a bit shadowed there, um, there is not a single person within a kilometre of where I am right now. So, and, uh, you know, your day-to-day -day work activities, I'm allowed to go in the busiest places in all of Melbourne and, you know, be amongst people and that's considered okay. You look at the street now and look, there's, there's a patch of cyclists there. There's gonna be at least 40 of them all together within a small patch, that's all okay. So it's a bit strange, these rules. Somehow fishing's one of those gray areas that people get a bit weird about, but there is no one around. There is absolutely no one around. And if something was to happen on me, well, oh, we're getting a bite here. Um, that's on me, you know, but to be out here and enjoy the elements and there's absolutely no one around it couldn't be better <clears throat> well we've been on the water now for 90 minutes so it is time to wrap it up and these two hour restrictions sure are super duper frustrating but that's the way it is bit of a challenging session out there today that water temperature is still really cold you know what, we caught a couple of fish and considering everything that's happening around at the moment, I'll happily take that. Now I know it is challenging times for a lot of people out there, so do stay safe. We are doing our best to get some content, but as you can imagine, it's pretty challenging at the moment to get out there and create some content for everyone. We'll do our best and let's all hope that these restrictions are over soon and we can all get back to enjoying what we love doing most. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and until next time, Good fishing, everyone. Thank you.